Hi everyone, in these lectures we will talk about the spinal cord uh, anatomy and these are the subjects that we will uh, cover them we will uh, have a general overview on the central nervous system we will talk about the gross anatomy of the spinal cords and we will finally talk about the blood supply and the venous drainage of and to the spinal cord this is a general overview on the central nervous system we all know that the central nervous system consists of two parts the brain and the spinal cord the brain is uh, uh, divided into three parts which are the forebrain the middle brain and the hinder brain this is just a general overview for the forebrain it is composed of the two cerebral hemispheres with, with their two lateral cavities and the third cavity and its surrounding tissue or, or what is called the diencephalon the midbrain is the part uh, that connect the forebrain with the hinderbrain and the hinderbrain is composed from the fourth ventricle and the tissues that surround it including the pons including the medulla oblongata including the cerebellum this is a cross section in the spinal cord as we see here uh, we have an anterior median fissure which is a deep midline groove this is in the anterior portion of the spinal cord in the posterior portion of the spinal cord we have a posterior median sulcus which is a shallow sulcus so anteriorly we have a fissure posteriorly we have a sulcus uh, from this uh, sulcus a posterior median septum of neuroglia extends into the substance of the spinal cord this posterior median septum within the spinal cord is attached to the incomplete posterior median septum of the arachnoid in the subarachnoidal space now we will talk about the lower limits of the spinal cord uh, this uh, picture or this slide summarizes the lower limits of the spinal cords uh, as we see here the uh, position of spinal dura mater remains a uh, constant in these three periods in fetus periods at birth and in adults which it uh, which is uh, at the s2 level uh, what is change is the position of the conus medullaris which is the lower limit of the spinal cords it will be at s2 level in fetus at l3 level at birth and at l1 or l2 level in adults depends on whether your bag was in flexed or extend uh, 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 or extend position now we will uh, talk uh, about the enlargements of the spinal cords as we see in the picture we have two enlargements we have a cervical enlargement and we have a lumbosacral enlargement this enlargements are due to increasing in the motor cells in the mass of the motor cells in the anterior horns of the gray matter uh, in the uh, cells of that are responsible of moving our muscles uh, these enlargements uh, the have a segmental levels and a vertebral levels which uh, of course are quite different the segmental levels of cervical enlargement is from c5 to t1 uh, and for the lumbosacral uh, enlargement is from l2 to l3 but 
the vertebral levels for the cervical enlargement is from C3 to T1 and for the lumbosacral enlargement is from T9 to L1 this is the segments of the uh, spinal cord and in relation to the vertebral levels so when we have a cervical segments they are uh, opposite to C1 to C7 vertebrae thoracic uh, segments are opposite to C7 to T11 vertebrae lumbar segments are opposite to T11 to L1 vertebrae and thoracic uh, and uh, sacral sacral here sacral sacral uh, segments are opposite to L1 to L2 vertebrae uh, this is uh, what uh, we have in uh, this video and will complete in next videos